Question number 11. Wasteland 3 is one of my favorite CRPGs. Mind to tell us what quests you designed there? I played the whole campaign several times and liked several of them quite a lot. I didn't design any particular quests. The way that the writing for the game kind of worked was that we sort of had a few set parameters that we worked within and then we would write in the narrative design, which is the decision trees and stuff. So they were kind of separate from like the quest lines. I worked on a bunch of stuff related to fish lips. So if you save fish lips and you go around with him, you'll probably hear a lot of the dialogue I had because I basically had to go to each area that he was in and write stuff for him to say. Uh, there were two maps that I worked on exclusively. One was Santa's workshop. I mean, not the real Santa, but you know, it's implied that he is, but he's not. I worked on that, wrote all of the dialogue there, the first encounter with Liberty, and I also wrote a lot of incidental stuff throughout the game. So whenever you run into rhyming stuff, that tends to be me. For example, the creepy dolls that you find, I wrote a lot of their little blurbs and, and texts, and there was a couple radio things that I wrote, which are effectively random in encounters. And I wrote several of the random encounters that you can run into on the, the main map. That game was a lot of fun to work on. The writing team was super, super great. The plan was that I was gonna work on the next one, the, the next expansion for it. And uh, for whatever reason, they laid a whole bunch of us off and uh, only kept the core team. So classic game industry. <sighs> Question number 12. Can you tell us about the canceled Blizzard games like StarCraft Ghost? I can tell you that I played it a little bit. It was fun. It definitely had interesting direction. The idea that you would be a ghost and moving through these different areas, but it didn't really do stealth very well. And they didn't really seem to know what their gameplay was. The demo that they showed had you fighting uh, like a Protoss boss hand-to-hand -hand 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 combat and like the stage would break and things would collapse down and then the fight would continue. It was very much almost like a brawler. I think the potential was there. I think they just didn't find the correct direction or didn't have the, the design chops for it. Unfortunately, Blizzard effectively passed on it. I think it was a mistake. They could have given better direction and then ultimately had a game. But the problem was that they weren't willing to fund the studio long enough for that to happen. And so their funding ran out on this basically passion project that they had brought to us. I think they expected us to be a publisher, but we weren't a publisher of other games. So that's something that you need to be aware of if you if you ever get into the game industry and are thinking about, I want to make my game and publish it. Make sure that the company that you're trying to impress with whatever you're doing, A, is a publisher, <laughs> and B, would accept something like that because most of them won't. Question number 13, what is your favorite WoW quest line? It's, uh, it wasn't made by me. It was made by, I think it was made by Christine Brownell. So so it was the Link, the Legend of Zelda reference one. It's called It's a Secret to Everybody, and it starts in on Goro Crater, and it's like a 16-part quest, and I think at the end it gives you a boomerang. And the reason that the quest was so important to me at the time, other than it being cool and a good reference to uh, the Legend of Zelda, it was also the only paladin item at the time that would be ranged. So it was a way to uh, pull mobs without having to jump into the middle of a group. It was a very important tool and it was a very cool quest line anyways. I enjoyed that one uh, very much. Question number 14, what quest line would you make for WoW if you were asked to reimagine classic WoW? A lot of the quest lines would probably be about different factions fighting with each other and some sort of intrigue that puts players against players and puts them into dangerous situations where they're crossing paths with other into PVP situations. Because if that was supposed to be the main focus of World of Warcraft, then I thought we should have embraced it more, and we really didn't. I, I don't remember many quest lines that do that, other than ones that say go kill X players. But instead, I'd like to create quest lines where maybe you kill other players, but maybe you don't. Maybe you work together, maybe you don't. Put players in those situations where they are encountering the enemy and seeing what they do in those situations, because the quest line could either put them at odds or sort of make them frenemies for a little bit and do various other things things. So those are the sorts of quest lines I think that were kind of missed opportunities. Question number 15. Are you playing any games at the moment in your spare time? What are your evergreen games that you can always come back to and what are you looking forward to? Yeah, speaking of which, uh, Warframe. I got back into Warframe again. Probably a mistake. Warframe is definitely still in my uh, top five games that I like to go back to periodically. There was a time period where every Christmas I would play the Division, the first Division. 
because it was a very Christmassy game. <laughs> and uh, roaming the streets of New York in Christmas during Christmas time was kind of my way of stoking nostalgia for my childhood. But unfortunately, the division stopped working for me. <laughs> like, I've tried to reinstall it several times. Game just doesn't work. I don't think Ubisoft supports it anymore, if I'm being honest with you. Question number 16. What are your thoughts on the Command & Conquer series and their remaster? Not a fan. There's never a fan of Command & Conquer. It's just not my cup of tea. Honestly, RTSs in general aren't my cup of tea. Warcraft 3 spoke to me quite a bit more than a standard RTS because of the hero and the RPG elements and all the things I could do in the campaign missions. Command & Conquer doesn't have anything like that and probably never will. I know they have hero units, but not. There's no RPG elements, really. Someone would build a tank and run over my carefully crafted infantry army and I'm like, huh, <laughs> that seems terribly unfair because in real life you just dodge the tank there's no way it should be able to move faster uh, especially cornering but anyways whatever question 17 in stranger's wrath what's the thing that stranger is using to capture enemies how does it work is it like a pokeball now it's not really explained anywhere and it's not in the lore it was described to me by lauren lanning as a bounty vacuum and all it does is suck them up into it into a condensed gaseous form <laughs> and then you can spit them out later. Uh, though we never see that process, you do deliver them to the, the bosses, to the jail cells, and you are technically getting the bounty on all the bodies or conscious live people that you recover. But the lore on that, not there. <laughs> and it wasn't my world to uh, make that lore for, so it sort of was left as an open-ended thing. Question 18. What are your favorite video gaming genres in both a developmental sense and in actually playing and enjoying them kind of sense? My favorite genres are Probably anything that adds a strong narrative and RPG element. So some of my favorite games growing up were adventure games. These days I don't like them so much anymore because they're so linear in how they tell their tale that I have no real agency in them and it's just a question of do, how do I find the next check mark on the story list in order to progress and I'm not a fan of that so much anymore unless the story is really compelling in which case it only becomes frustrating when I can't find that check mark usually due to terrible logic. I used to like adventure games quite a lot now I like exploration the most so any open world games where I can like sort of find secrets are is super fun to me so like the last one I really enjoyed the hell out of was probably Fallout 4 and all of the minor storytelling that goes on you go into a housing complex and there are rooms and each room might have sort of its own little tale and it's not even text or anything it's just like how things are positioned in the room this guy had like a collection of caps and was doing something with them this guy had a was watching television when he died in the bomb and just that kind of stuff. I really like environmental storytelling. I don't think it's used as often as it could be. Those are just the types of games that I enjoy these days. Not that there's a lot of them. I have this issue where I can't go back to games I've completed. For me, the story is kind of finished and I don't want to hear anymore. The interesting thing about Warframe is that the story is always developing further. Even though I've gotten past some of the really cool uh, elements of the, the main storyline, there's still more stuff going on in the future and I'm kind of trying to catch up again because I heard that there was some interesting twists. It seems like I enjoy shooters, <laughs> but I'm not sure that's the case. It's more the exploration of the open worldness that that happens. So like uh, another example would be Elder Scrolls, Skyrim, Fallout 4, those types of games. I've looked for ones that are that do as much as they did and they just don't have quite the content or maybe the people working on those games are better at it. Question number 19, what are your least favorite genres? Well, now these days adventure games tend to be on the bottom of my list of things I want to play. I like them in theory, but generally the stories have not been up to snuff. I'm looking for new genres. I'm tired of the same old, same old being repeated. There are core gameplay systems for any particular genre. If you've watched my Game Design 101 Part 3, you'll sort of see what I'm talking about in terms of there's a set number of systems that have to be in a particular genre. While the in the way that those are executed and the interpretation of those systems can ha have a lot of play in it. I've sort of seen it all, done it all at this point. What I want to see is games that are genre breaking. Take something and spin it on its head. That's few and far between and a lot of the time they're so abstract I don't even understand them anymore and I need that narrative layer that sort of guides me through it so I can understand it. I would say the best example would be Jonathan Blow's efforts. He took a platformer and combined it with a puzzle game about time movement, time travel back and forth uh, and slowing down and so forth and all those mechanics of time and just like blew my mind. Braid was like 
great. Uh, I love that kind of experience. The witness, uh, he he sort of took a puzzle element and like expanded it into a world and sort of fed it into the world. So it created this sort of narrative connection, but it never quite hit me the same way that Braid did. I, I still enjoyed it. Portal it would be another good example of that. I'd like to see more of those sort of explorations. Thank you.